Hey y'all, hi. So today I am finally reviewing About Faced Beauty. This is actually a highly requested video. A lot of you have for a long time wanted me to try this brand. And recently when I was in Ulta looking for some drugstore makeup to review, I was surprised and delighted to see a full About Face. Was I calling it About Faced? About Face. <laughs> about Face. A full About Face display in Ulta and in the drugstore section, no less. So I didn't realize that About Face was now sold at Ulta. I thought it was still just like a direct-to-consumer brand that you can only get on their website, but no, it's available at Ulta. And Ulta is considering it drugstore, which I think it makes sense. Like it's at the very high end of drugstore pricing. Everything hovers around $15. So all of that fascinated me, but more than anything, I was like, oh my gosh, here it is. I can just pick one of pretty much each of these products and do a full brand review. So that's what I'm doing for you today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for being here. Thanks for clicking. My name is Hannah. I make videos about beauty and fashion, but I try not to promote overspending. I think that especially in the beauty community, it can be a problem. It's hard to balance moderation with a true love of beauty, which I think is a good quality and is a quality that so many of us have. So even when I'm just straight up reviewing makeup like I'm doing today, I try to stay grounded through that. If it sounds good and if you like the video, I hope to subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. All right, I don't have that much makeup on my face. There aren't any complexion products from About Face. I'm actually just wearing green color corrector and a little bit of spot concealer. And you know, you can see my real skin. You can see some of my blemishes. I gotta tell you, I am tired of full coverage. <laughs> I'm tired of covering everything up. It makes me look like a blank sheet of paper, like a ghost. And then I have to work so hard to bring life back to my face. Then I look like I'm wearing so much makeup. I would just, I'd rather just tone down the redness and look like a real person. So that's what I'm into right now. That's what we're starting with. First up, About Face. Face brow artist in shade five ash brown. Here's what it looks like, just like everything from About Face. The design is wonderful. I mean, it's cute that they've got this green little spoolie. It's attractive. It does have that kind of cheeky, minimal, minimal maximal thing going on. It's got a lot of character, but I don't feel like these products are over designed packaging wise. I mean, the one thing I'll briefly say is that all of the outer packaging, like the cartons, it's all plastic. And I know that that's true for a lot of brands but I feel like when a brand launches new and it's just been like built from the ground up and they choose tons of plastic for, I mean, the components, but also just like the external packaging, which could so easily be cardboard, like so much more easily that plastic could have been cardboard than like this plastic could have been. It always eats at me a little bit more than it does when it's a brand that's been around for a long time and they just haven't changed their plastic packaging into something more eco-friendly because it's like they were sitting in the boardroom making decisions about what to package these components in. And they were just like, we're gonna choose plastic, we just don't care. And they were just doing that like last year with all that we know now, you know? I know it's unfair to criticize one brand very deeply about that. It's an issue across the industry, but when it is a relatively newly launched brand, I'm always like, could we not have chosen <laughs> something else? It's very cool looking. I mean, it's very chic and attractive. I understand aesthetically why they did it but I wish they could have done it with something other than plastic. Okay, pros and cons, pros and cons about brow artist. Actually one pro, maybe two, one and a half pros and lots of cons. I don't really like this product. One con, well, let's start with the pros. <laughs> Although you're, you're witnessing one con right now, which is that as soon as I opened it and started using it, the pencil broke off from the inside and like it slides out and falls out all the time. The two pros, the two good things about this are one, the shade ash brown, so great. It is an ashy brown. You know, that swatch is making it look a little warmer than I've kind of thought that it is. Maybe it's just how it's looking spread out like that, but I like that it has an ashiness, but it's not too, too dark. Sometimes brow shade ranges totally skip the ashy kind of mid-range shades, and so I like the shade. I also really like this fluffy spoolie on the end. It's different from the spare kind of wiry spoolies that you usually get on a brow product. It makes the brows more dispersed and fluffier, so I've enjoyed using this spoolie, and I've been using it even when I don't use the other end of the brow pencil, which I haven't been doing because I don't like it. And here are all the cons, the reason I don't like it. It's very soft. It's too soft. It's like oil pastel. It's shaped in this like chunky way that has sharp edges that you should be able to like use the broad side of it to gently fill in and use the sharp side of it to draw little hair strokes. But you can't draw hair strokes with it. It's too soft. So as soon as I started trying to do that, it just left these huge swaths of like soft color in my brows and made 
them very filled in and very blocky right away. And that's not the look that I like. I like to be able to go in and fill in the sparse areas of my brows just with little strokes and have that blend into the hair strokes of the actual hairs, the rest of it. There's no way to do that with this. It's just, it's not hard enough or even waxy enough. It's difficult to control. And I've really struggled with my brows since I started using it. In two videos last week, one brow looked totally filled in and the other one looked like it wasn't filled in. I don't know how I didn't notice it right before I sat down to film, but it happened twice and I really realize now that it's because I've been testing this product, the struggle that I've been having with this that caused that to happen. One brow got like out of control and really blocky and filled in really quickly. And then it was a little bit more light handed with the other one. So it didn't quite get to that point, but it's just been a mess. So I like the color, but I don't like the formula or the way that the formula and the shape of the pencil interact with each other. I don't like the fact that it broke off and fell out right away. I don't recommend this product from About Face. However, <laughs> I'm going to try to use it one last time because that's what I'm doing today. I try to do as little as possible because I just don't want to look a fright. It just does a lot really quickly. Like that's the brow and it just immediately is like, ah, it's all, it's filled in. You can see the middle is suddenly really dark and I'm afraid to take it down closer to the front because then I'll all end up looking really blocky. I'm just like brushing it through my hair so softly. It's hard to make a gradient and I'm also afraid to bring it down into the tail because I think it's going to make that look really blocky and painted on. Yeah, for some reason it just gets wildly out of control really fast. I never like how my brows end up looking. I'm going to try to balance out the other side. Ugh, it just feels like it's unevenly smearing huge chunks of itself onto parts of my brow and not other parts. And I will say I had um, a little bit of brow wax in my brows already. It might be that if you don't customarily put anything in your brows to set them into place and that all you're doing is trying to fill them in and then they take their natural shape if that's how you do your brows maybe it'll work better for you maybe that's what it's designed for but I can't do that because the natural shape of my brows is very like down and strange so I always put when I'm using a pencil like this I always use some kind of wax or pomade or gel first and I've never had this exact problem with something so maybe that's a little bit of a caveat but it, it doesn't explain away everything about it that's been hard all right I think that that's the best I'm gonna get. And I still feel like weirdly this brow looks darker than this one, but I feel like I put more product in this one. I feel like I can't get them to be the same shape. I feel like it's been a real struggle. I feel like they don't look even and there's nothing I can do with this product to make them even. I'm gonna leave it, but needless to say, it hasn't impressed me much. And now that I've demonstrated it for you and told you all about it, I'm gonna stop using it. I might keep it around for the fluffy spoolie, but I'm gonna stop using the pencil. All right, on to a happier phase of this review. The standout product from About Face. What everyone has said is true. The eye paints, is that what they're called? It just says eyeshadow on them, but they're liquid eyeshadows. There's a matte formula and there's a shimmer formula that they call the fractal formula. Fluid eye paint. So matte fluid eye paint and fractal eye paint. They are so good. And you know, I struggle with liquid eyeshadow. It is hard for me to get an even blend, a diffuse blend. It's hard for me to get it not to be packed. Patchy. The only like liquid or cream eyeshadow that I've ever really, really fallen for is the Tom Ford one because it's so moussey. It gives you a lot of time to work with it. These are both just phenomenal. Here's what the doe foot looks like. And doesn't that just look deliciously painty? Doesn't that just look like paint? Fluid eye paint is such a good description because that's the thing about it. It's so fluid. It's fluid and thin. And there's so much time to just like blend and blend and blend and blend. And the blend is so so soft, so effortlessly soft. It's just really liquidy and it blends beautifully to a gradient. Do you see that? I've been able to get it to look like that on my eye every time, like from the very first time with a brush, just like blending softly. It'll blend out into this like beautiful soft gradient. I find this especially impressive for a matte formula. This formula has blown me away. However, <laughs> I don't really like this greenish gray color on me. The color is called Hidden Garden. And in the store, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because 
it's like this taupey cool tone. The package looks a little more taupe than the actual color. Can you see that? If it was actually this color with just a tiny bit more warmth or neutrality in it, I think it would have worked out really well for me. But it does have kind of like a hidden garden. There's like a green hidden in it. And when you start to blend it out, it gets that like greeny concrete gray color look. And that over the years I've learned is one shade of eyeshadow that just doesn't work for me. Like it, I really, really don't like how I end up looking. I can't make any of my other products like lip products or cheek products work with it. I was wearing it in a video recently, the one about how to make your closet align with your lifestyle. I had tried to cover it up with something a little bit more taupe, but you can kind of see it still shining through the kind of greeny gray color and you can see how it looks. I just am not a fan. So I'm not gonna put this on today because I'm actually going somewhere after this. So I'm highly motivated to like make it work. And I know these products well enough at this point that I feel like I can do that. And I think trying to use this product, trying to demonstrate it on my eyes would be a mistake. But that is only, simply, 100% because of the color. The texture is great, and in fact, as soon as I kind of got the picture, I had to fight the urge to run out and buy it in another color because it's so fun to work with. And I think that if it's the kind of makeup you like, you know, if you really like liquid eyeshadow and you work well with it in general, oh my gosh, I just think this is like the best one on the market, or it's like one of the best. It's definitely the best one I've tried in a really long time, if not ever. The Fractal one is is just as elegant in application and it's just a little bit easier to work with, especially because I got this pretty inoffensive color. Like that gray, I mean, even if the undertone was good, it would be quite a statement. It's like a dark color on me and I would be working with it carefully. But this, it's this like beautiful frosty kind of neutral pale pink called Smolder and it doesn't scare me at all. So again, lots of time for it to dry down. Like I put it on my eye and then I had to find a brush and it took a second, but I wasn't worried. As soon as it starts to blend out, it does start to dry down, but I was so easily able to get that kind of gradient. And now it has the shininess of a liquid eyeshadow that, you know, it's, it's hard to kind of get that quality, that kind of molten quality with a powder shadow. And it's also really sturdy because once it sets, it does set completely. I'm so impressed by these. I tend to think of this as the kind of thing that's just hard. It's like hard for the average makeup user to make it work, to make it not look a mess, to keep it from being patchy, and these are just so easy. They do layer and blend together pretty well. Like I've done some sort of elaborate, smoky, smeary looks in the evenings during makeup playtime when I'm trying to get to know these products with both of these together. That is possible. It's not the vibe that I want today. And I actually don't think these are like the best colors necessarily for each other. So this does layer over other things Things. You can blend other things into it. You can blend them into each other. But I feel like they're at their best when it's one and done. Like these are really, really good one and done liquid eyeshadows. And that's what I want to stick with today for this. But I am going to add a third eyeshadow product that I tested from About Face. This is the Pearly Shadow Stick in the shade Actual Ambrosia. I love this color. It's like a taupey shimmer that's not too dark. In fact, this reminds me a lot of the color, the one eyeshadow from that Chantikai eyeshadow palette that I decluttered recently because I didn't like the other three colors. But I said in that overhead video, Reckoning with PR, that I was kind of sorry to see it go because I like this color because it's a neutral taupe, but it's light enough that I can wear it all over the lids and it's still a very, very, very light eye look for me, like an easy daytime look. I feel like this is giving me, it's giving me back what I lost when I decluttered that little palette. And it works really well as an eyeliner, which is most of what I'm going to use it for today. So I'm putting it in and and under the waterline, kind of filling the space between my lashes, but also getting it into the waterline. I'm gonna blend it out with a pencil brush. And I'm also gonna use a little bit on my upper lash line, just on like the outer third of my eye, just for a little bit of dimension. And yeah, they blend beautifully with each other too. I mean, it's not blending because the liquid eyeshadow has set, but this is going on easily on top of the liquid. It's not giving me any trouble. All of the eye products work well together from about face. I mean, I feel like this is what the brand has absolutely nailed and hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. They're just so easy to work with and the results are so pretty. However, we're on a real roller coaster here because mascara has totally failed to impress me. It's not like disastrous. It's not like the telescopic that I tested recently where a huge flake chunked off and got into my eye in the evening. It's just very run of the mill, ho-hum. In terms of application and the effect that I get, nothing about it has distinguished it for me. It's the 1994 mascara. Not my favorite brush. 
you know, like this little, everyone, I feel like everyone's doing this right now, this little spiky rubber reversal brush. So already it's like gonna have to do a lot to impress me. And it just doesn't, right? It's super normal. And then it's really hard to get off in the evenings. So if it was just like a regular ho-hum mascara that washed off pretty easily, I w- wouldn't be as against it. And I might kind of integrate it and just go through it and use it up and maybe it would grow on me over time. But I hate it when I have to like fight and fight and fight to get a mascara to dissolve off of my lashes at the end of the day and have to go in with balm cleanser like three times in a row. I hate that. It, I don't think it's a waterproof mascara, but it kind of behaves like one when I'm trying to get it off of my lashes. So it's a pass because of that for me. I'm not going to keep testing it. I just have been doing it for this video. I'm going to put it on one last time for you, um, but then that'll be it. So that's how it looks once it's applied. You know, not bad, but nothing to write home about unless you're writing home to say it's really hard to remove this mascara from my eyelashes when I'm washing my face in the evening. Okay, moving on to what is a fail for me, but I mean, it might not be a fail for everyone. This is the About Face Cheek Freak Blush Balm. I like the packaging again, and I like the way that the little thing looks on the inside. It's like a dome, this dome of product. Balm is kind of a, a weird, well, it's this is a cream blush. I, I would not call this a balm, and it definitely doesn't stay balmy on the cheeks like in that Vaseline-y way. So that's what you're worried about with this. Don't worry. It's a matte cream blush that really sticks to the cheeks and sort of dries down and becomes one with the skin. So in that way, the formula is actually great. Uh, that's actually something that I like. The issue for me with this is the shade range. It, all of the shades are incredibly bright and saturated. And so that's why the fact that it's a fail is specific to me because this is the shade of all of them, Champagne Room, that I felt would be <laughs> the most subtle on me. I mean, I'm laughing because none of them, there isn't a one in the range that could possibly be construed as subtle for me. But this is the one that I hoped I might be able to get that kind of bright, healthy cheek look with. And it's just, it always looks like just strawberry paint on my cheeks, no matter what I do. I'm going to try to apply it lightly and like blend it in so it's not too much today. But you can see that already. It's just, it's so contrasty with me, with my skin, and it's so bright. And no matter how little I apply and how much I spread it around, it always ends up looking really, really strong. So if it had colors that were easier for me to wear, I might actually love it because it does look really natural. So I think this is going to be great for like deeper skin tones or people for whom these bright blush colors are the most flattering and they like work with everything else you're trying to do. For me, I need my blush the color of like old, dirty, silly putty, you know? And it's always like a whole thing when I'm trying to work with a a color like this. So that's as subtle as I could get it, but it's almost laughable, like how little I applied and how much I blended it out. Because of the color, it's not a satisfying product for me to use. It's not a satisfying cream blush. I'll definitely give it away. It's just not my thing. I would love it if they absolutely doubled the shade range of this, just mixing in a whole bunch of desaturated, more muted, more neutral shades and some paler shades. And then ending the video on some somewhat greener pastures, the lip products. Both of them have really great qualities and each one of them has a quality that makes me feel a little bit less than passionate love for it, but it's different in each case. So the liquid, the matte painted lip color is successful for the exact same reason as the matte fluid eye paint, which is it's a liquid lipstick. Look at it. It's so painty. It's so fluid and painty. And just like the eyeshadow, it's like that quality makes it really easy to apply. And when I've used it, I can use a little tip of it to like really define my lips and fill it in and I get this beautiful super lightweight application of a pretty strong matte lip color. It dries down, doesn't flake or anything. Feels like it becomes one with the lips but in the way of like a very thin layer painted on rather than a lip stain. It's just an incredibly elegant formula for a pretty long wearing liquid lipstick. However, it's that like cinnamon brown color that I used to think I really liked and then over time I realized that it always just looks a bit orange on me. I don't like the color and I'm not going to wear it today because of that. So I think if I had this in a different color, I would be more into it, even though liquid lipstick isn't really my thing. But what I can say about this is it's similar to the cheeks. It's like for a liquid lipstick, I think the formula is perfect, like perfect, perfect. They absolutely nailed it. The color I ended up with isn't one that I love to wear and liquid lipstick in general isn't my favorite type of lip product. So it hasn't ended up worming its way, this one, into my affections, but I definitely respect what they've done here. The lip color that I've worn the most out of the two of them by far is this one, the About Face Cherry Pick 
Lip Color Butter in Kiwi Fuzz. This looks like it could run the risk of being warm like that other one color-wise, but it's not. It's really beautiful. It has this like clicky, I really associate this with K-Beauty. It's like a clicky pen and it clicks up. It's very pigmented and shiny, which isn't always my favorite, but I feel like I've been able to make it work with this. I haven't struggled with it too much. The thing that turns me off a little bit is that the smell is so strong. It's like a really sweet, it smells just like candy, like straight up cherry candy, really, really sweet and really strong. I just wish that the smell was a little bit more sophisticated or a little bit less strong. It feels like a young product only because of the smell. And in other ways, I actually really like it. So look how painty that is. I mean, that's like a lipstick. So it says lip butter, which sort of makes you think it's going to be like a sheer or chapsticky product. But in order to get it that way, you have to blot because like, I know I look a fool right now. I'm just trying to show you that when you first start applying it, it's full pigment. So I think lip butter is a bit of a misnomer. It's like a misdirect on this. I would call this a vinyl lipstick. Like this to me is a lipstick. It's a very shiny, very pigmented, full coverage lipstick. It can be blotted down. You know, I don't usually wear a lip stick at this full opacity. With the lightness of the rest of the look today, it's not bad, you know, but here's what I prefer. Just slightly less intensity, right? It's still shiny. This is more like a lip butter, like a pigmented lip butter. It does feel really nourishing on the lips. I feel like it makes the texture of my lips, the surface of them look really good. And I've been testing these products for a while, of course, because I wanted to be able to give feedback in this video. And every time I've worn this, like worn it for a video or worn it around because I'm just trying to get a little more of a sense of these products, I'm like, oh, the cherry, <laughs> I'm like putting it on. I'm like, oh, it's so pigmented. It's so thick. It's so sweet. It's so shiny. And then I get it applied and I blot it down and I'm like, I love it. And I feel, I feel like I, I end up really enjoying wearing it throughout the day and really enjoying the way that my lips look. I like the color, you know, it's that ever so slightly grungy, raisiny mauve that's not so pink that it goes super pink and it's not warm enough to turn orange on me. It's pretty. Next to the eyeshadows, next to the eye products, this is the, the favorite. You know what I mean? The one that I've enjoyed the most. I'm just going to put my mole back on. Ugh, even that, I feel like this eyebrow pencil like won't do well. It's like it won't do anything that I want it to do. I've had it. So I think it's pretty straightforward. These products really run the gamut for me from success to failure. The absolute standout products from About Face are all of the products that are to do with the eyes, except for the mascara, all of the eyeshadow products. I mean, that's really what they've excelled at. I would say followed by the lip pick, cherry pick lip butter, if you don't mind a very strong, sweet fruit scent. If you love liquid lipstick, this might also be on your list, the lip paint. These like painty things and these beautiful little soft tubes, like everything from About Face that's like that is a serve. And then based on my description, I think you'll be able to tell that the cheek, what they're calling a balm, but which is actually like a skin-like matte cream blush could be your perfect product if the shade range is what you need or if it has a shade in it that works well for you. For me, it's not that way, but I think it's another good product. Like with that caveat about shade, it's another well-designed product. And then the fails for me in terms of formula are the brow pencil and the mascara. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know this brand has been out for a while and a lot of people reviewed it like <laughs> years ago, um, but it took me this long. It kind of took it coming into Ulta. It took me seeing it in person actually. I've been to the website a bunch of times thinking about spending some of my review budget on it. And every time I get all the stuff in my cart and then I'm like, mm, I don't know. But seeing it there at Ulta and realizing how accessible it's become really motivated me. That was the thing that caused me to push it through. And I'm not sorry that I did it because it's a real pleasure using these eye products, a real surprising pleasure, because as I've said, it's usually difficult for me to use that kind of thing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you're new, I hope you will subscribe. I also hope you'll like the video and leave me a little comment if you feel so disposed. Whatever you do, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.